Ever wanted to read someone's mind? Well, if you're part of a small research team at UC Berkeley, now you can. Here, let's try it. Look into my eyes and try to see what I'm thinking of. Hehehe. <laughs> oh, wait. Don't, don't we need some sort of machine for this? That's right. Using a functional magnetic resonance imager and a database of 6 million images taken from the internet, these researchers were able to connect what their subjects were actually seeing to those most similar images in that database just by scanning their brains. Check out these images. On the left are the target images, what the subject was actually seeing. The images to their right are the most probable matches as deduced from their brain scans. Now, I'm sure not all of the matches are as good as the ones they highlighted in the study, but, like, wow! Of course, future versions of this technology could be used for good, like communicating with people in comas, or interrogating terrorists without waterboarding them. But it could also be used for nefariousness. Bum bum bum! How do you feel about it? Tell me in the comments. We may be on our way toward technological telepathy, but I can't yet tell what you're thinking. So this week's mission is simple. I want you to dredge your brain, books, news, the internet, and tell me about something really cool that deserves to be featured on this show. Why is there, why is there a question mark? But, uh, that's not funny. Send me your ideas in the comments below or in an email to betterworld at burningquestions, burningquestions.com. Now, last week's mission was to create something you could be proud of, and we got a few submissions here. Larry built a beautifully oversized wooden cribbage board. Renegade Proxy has created a fantasy world that he has big plans for, and he'd love to share it with you. Links down below if you're interested in a quick read. Scott Mulgrew made a snowflake series. Here we have Gojira wrecking a cityscape and Batman. My personal favorites are the zombie graveyard and what appears to be spider alien. And I'll leave you with some dude who tries to change a tire for the first time. Now this is borderline on the whole create something mission, but I'll allow it. This is my car. Pretty nice car if I do say so myself. It's one flaw. And that flaw is this flat <laughs> tire. So, I, Nathan Kessler, am going to attempt to change it because that's something that I'm going to be proud of. What do I have to change it with? The flathead screwdriver, pointy, effective for prying. The suspect jack that came with my car, hopefully able to lift it. Sandy fire flashlight, very bright. Doesn't always work when you need it to. Hubcap, that's actually not a tool. Uh, and the four by four thing. Now I'm not sure what this is. It came with the jack and I assume it's part of how you lift it. All right, so with the help of this thing, I have lifted the car using the suspect jack the one where this tire is no longer on the ground as flat as a mother And now to try and get it off. I assume that's where this thing is going to come in handy. As you can see, this thing was very helpful because I was able to undo these bolts and get this off of my car. Now the question is, will the spare, whose pressure I've been using to pump my windshield washer fluid, go on well using this thing? Well, will it not? And you can see my brakes might need to be cleaned a little bit. Anyway, all right, well, I had to jack up my car a little bit higher to fit it on, because I guess when I was jacking up the first time, I forgot that the tire that was on there was flat. However, while I was doing that, I noticed that I have a whole bunch of tires sitting right here with plants growing in them. So maybe I don't need to go to the tire store after all. Mission accomplished. I'm Nathan Gessler, and that's the thing I'm going to be proud of this week.